I see there's some folks connecting to audio still, so I'll wait just a second. They might be having some tech issues. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thanks everybody so much for joining us today. Um, we're gonna be talking about non-consensual tracking devices. I am Leah Poole, she, her, and CCASA's Rural Sexual Assault Services Specialist. Hi y'all, I am Sky David. I'm the staff attorney at NCCASA and I use she, her pronouns. Um, so we wanted to do this webinar because we know there have been a lot of news stories popping up about non-consensual tracking and specifically air tags from Apple, which were launched in April of 2021. And we've just been seeing across the country an uptick in stalking occurring using these devices to discreetly track other people. Um, the people using these devices to track others range from partners, parents tracking their children, um, and of course, strangers or acquaintances that slip the device into someone's bag or in their car. Um, and as we continue to see the way these devices impact and intersect with sexual violence, um, we just wanted to give advocates an opportunity to be introduced to these devices and for ways to work with survivors who discover that these devices are being misused against them um, to know, you know what to expect. So throughout the presentation, please feel free to drop any questions in the chat or unmute yourself. Perfect. So of course, we're going to start our webinar like we start all of our webinars um, with an NC CASA introduction. So the North Carolina Coalition Against Sexual Assault is an inclusive statewide alliance working in sexual violence through education, advocacy, and legislation. We use a social justice framework. Therefore, our work is done from a strong intersectional social justice perspective. By centering our work around marginalized communities, we believe everyone is served. Oh, oops, sorry. Our work um, includes organizing and sponsoring statewide trainings, supporting rape crisis programs, resource sharing and technical assistance, legislative agendas and policy change, anti-human trafficking outreach and technical assistance, prevention education and technical assistance, and we do a lot of work with colleges and universities. And so we acknowledge at the top of all of our webinars that not all women are victims, not all, all men are harm doers, any gender can be a victim and any gender can be a harm doer. Okay, so today the content that we're gonna try to cover is defining non-consensual tracking, exploring the current impact of tracking devices, discussing the intersections of stalking and sexual violence and feeling equipped with tools for safety planning around these devices. So we'll just start out, um, non-consensual tracking is exactly what it sounds like, the monitoring of a person's location without their consent. Like most things related to technology, the majority of users will not misuse a device or intend to use a device to harm others, um, but some people do, and there's always a risk associated that advocates must prepare for. Um, so because uh, Air tags are the most mainstream right now, I think that folks are talking about. They were initially created, of course, with the intent to help people keep track of their everyday personal items like keys or bags. But due to their discreet and um, highly accessible nature, they're very inexpensive. Um, people have found that they can easily be used to track other people. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Sky to go over our um, tracking laws and cyber stalking. So North Carolina law does cover non-consensual tracking devices. <clears throat> and I'm not gonna read you this entire um, statute, but it does say here, if you scroll down, <laughs> um, it installs places or uses an electronic tracking device. And so this was created in 2015 actually because of placing GPS devices on cars. That's what this was created to cover, but it does cover anything based on this language, places, installs, 
tracks. So you have that language that will cover any sort of thing that is used to track someone else. And it is used in our cyber stalking laws. So it is not under our stalking laws, which are 14-277.3a. It's under our cyber stalking laws because in the early 2010s, it was starting to become more common to see folks stalking on the internet and also through other electronic means. And so we found that this was the best fit um, and it may need to be updated, but just to reiterate, these are covered under current law. I've had some cases where folks have reached out and thought that they weren't covered or the police told them that there is no recourse for that, like we haven't caught up to our technology. But what is true is that our statutes are written in a way to go ahead and cover any type of device that is used to track you. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, if you're typing, we will come back to your question. Um, okay, perfect. So um, we're mostly gonna be referencing air tags and tiles throughout the presentation, which um, if you haven't seen these devices yet, air tags are um, the little round one with the Apple symbol. The middle ones are tiles and tiles actually come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Um, they come in like slim ones that you can fit in your wallet. And so they initially were really helpful for tracking your stuff. Um, and they came out before the AirTag. So you may have um, heard of these going back a couple of years. Um, they have little button ones. And then this is other one on the far right is just like your standard GPS tracker that someone like Sky said might put on your car. Um, and so, we're mostly going to be talking about air tags and tiles as they're relatively new and very mainstream really hot topic right now um, but tracking devices have been around for decades since the early 90s tracking devices have been available to civilians things such as gps locators um, and our smartphones are gps trackers in and of themselves uh, when we have apps with our location turned on we're essentially allowing ourselves to be tracked by anyone we're friends with unless we change the settings. Further, iPhone has fostered the Find My Network. So if you have an iPhone, you're probably familiar with that app that it looks like a, like a radar kind of. Um, and it comes standard on all iPhones. And it really, you know, Find My Friends is literally marketed as a way to locate your friends when you're not together. And so while most people use this to meet up with their friends and find them when you're out and about, I know a lot of college students use it to try to find their friends at a local bar or restaurant or something like that. Um, parents may use it to help keep track of their kids. Um, and so it really begs the question when we're talking about tracking and non-consensual tracking, has it been normalized just because it is part of our everyday and it's not something we think about until we're in danger. Um, so just, you know, some food for thought there. Um, so give a yes or a thumbs up in the chat if you've actually taken the time to review your location setting on your apps. I see Melissa has. Okay, I assume if no one else said yes or gave a thumbs up that that means, oh, Lola has, okay. Okay, so if you haven't done that, I definitely would recommend that you do, not only for yourself, but also so that you know how to help survivors know where to look. Um, many people don't think about this until it's an issue, so they don't even necessarily know how to change the settings. And any app that shares your location should have an option to turn location sharing off. And Sky, you did come back on camera, so I didn't know if you wanted to say anything. So I work a lot with college students and I also teach a college course and I talk about this a lot. And I have the college students pull out their cell phone and tell me how many folks they share their location with. 
And I would say 90% of college students share their location with five or more people, which at the time, I think students think that they are being safe by sharing with their family members and their friends. But as I say to them, and I recommend you saying to clients that come in, especially in a stalking situation, hey, these people don't need to know your location at all times. You may think that your boyfriend, girlfriend, whomever is has your best interest at heart. But as you know, there are so many ways for this to be abused. And like Leah said, any apps that you have that are tracking your location can really tell people where you are. And also, let's say Leah and I are together and someone who may be stalking me knows that I'm with Leah a lot. Then they can look at Leah's location, whether that's on Venmo, um, you know, find my friends or even something like my fitness pal that tells you where that person is. And those are things that I think folks don't think about as well, but just please review this with your clients when you're safety planning for them to make sure that they know that they can turn that off and they can turn it off on all apps as well. And on top of that, what another thing that is helpful is to know how the devices function. And so I am not a tech savvy person. I had to Google this. Um, and so you don't, but the thing is you don't have to be tech savvy to have your location sharing going on um, because most of it is through Bluetooth. So basically you just have to be in a certain range of someone for the device to connect or pair with another device. So if you have an Apple watch and an iPhone and they're connected when they're within range of each other, that's using Bluetooth. And it's the same way the Find My Network works is by using, it relies on the over 1 billion Apple devices that form a network with one another to use location tracking. So you don't necessarily have to be near the person that's tracking you. If you're with a network of other people who are using the Find My Network, that's how they use Bluetooth to track you. Um, and so, it's, it's very simple. And again, it's something we don't even think about because it's just very common. Um, and then finally, tracking devices are extremely accessible. So just a quick search on Amazon, you'll find so many options costing anywhere from $20 to $100. I think because everything Apple makes is astronomically expensive, we would assume that AirTags are as well, but they're only $29. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this slide, we're going to just watch a short video. Um, it's a news story out of Michigan related to non-consensual tracking devices and the increased visibility of misusing these devices. Just in the last week, we've had four. At Dearborn Police alone, four cases this week of Apple AirTags, Bluetooth trackers used by criminals. We are seeing this not just in Dearborn, but all over. Sergeant James Isaac sees the AirTags used in two ways. By car thieves, they stick them on target cars, tracking the vehicle until it's the perfect time to steal. We find these commonly underneath seats, in between um, the seat cushions. We found them behind license plates. We found them in visors. And they're used to stalk people, suspects slipping them in purses or coat pockets of victims. The reality is somebody's following your movements, and so I, I can understand how that can be incredibly unsettling. They're becoming so common. Dearborn's police chief, Issa Shaheen, is soon releasing a public service announcement on them. It's critically important to Mayor Hamoud and myself that our community is informed in real time when there's a public safety concern. The good news, you get an alert like this on your Apple device that an AirTag is nearby, and you can request the AirTag to make a sound so you can find it. On that alert, take note of the serial number. That's what police Police used to track down the suspects. And for Android users, Apple created an app called Tracker Detect. You can download that and it will alert you. If they get an alert on their phone that they're possibly being followed by one of these air tags, to immediately call 911, especially if they think that they are in danger. Putting a tracker on someone's car or anywhere on them without him knowing it's illegal. And you heard the sergeant, they'll find you. Jessica Dupnak, Fox 2 News. So anybody have any thoughts, reactions? 
anything like that to the video. Okay. Um, Sky, was there anything you wanted to add? Um, so we're going to talk more about some of those concepts that they talked about, like tracker detect and the notifications that people get a little bit later. But that's definitely important to think about. Um, Apple has received a lot of criticism for their air tags, especially from what is it like the Electronic Frontier Foundation or something like that, I think is the organization that they've been doing a lot of work um, around trying to make these devices safer and um, increase the privacy settings. And some of Apple's responses have been less than ideal. Um, they seem less than concerned about these issues. But of course, as advocates and people who work with people who are stalked all the time, we know that it's a serious problem. It's not something to take lightly. So I see in the chat, this is all new to me. So I appreciate them. Oh, good. So couldn't use the tracker detect app to see if someone put one in your car. Um, yes, you potentially could. Um, If, but the only thing is, is like you would have to suspect it. So the tracker detect isn't just going to automatically like alert you if they do find a device that's not yours or seems foreign. But if you are actively like using the app, it could find it. So that's the only downside is like, are most people assuming that they're being tracked? Probably not, unless something like a red flag occurs that makes you think that. Um, so it's a double-edged sword. Um, okay, so um, on the anti-sexual violence movement, we know that these devices aren't going anywhere and will continue to be an issue going forward. I know that during the pandemic, there has been a huge uptick in cyber stalking in general. Um, and so stalking and sexual violence are often linked and research shows that 2% of people who are stalked were also sexually assaulted by the perpetrator, meaning these devices may continue to be used to monitor a stalking victim and potential victim of sexual violence. Because these devices are generally low barrier and hard to detect, some people may never know that they're being tracked. Further, when we think about stalking and sexual violence in the context of partner violence, we can also see how these devices would be really easy to track a partner with. Um, and I also think it's important to mention the use of these devices from parents to track children. Um, I've cited this article in our resources, but there was an article in the New York Times about air tags and stalking um, that Sky sent to me. And one of the people interviewed in the article was a mom from Cary, North Carolina, who had secretly placed an air tag in her daughter's car, I think. And her daughter was eventually alerted that an air tag was traveling with her and her daughter thought she was being stalked by like a stranger or, you know, like a creepy person. And it turns out it was her mom <laughs> because her mom didn't tell her um, or ask her when they didn't have a conversation about it. And so this is something that I think happens a lot and that we don't necessarily think of as like particularly dangerous because parents, you know, say that it's coming from a place of love and wanting to keep their kids safe. And that might be true. Um, but the problem with that logic is that if we are telling kids like tracking for love is a normal thing, then when they grow up and they may be in a relationship um, where a partner kind of says the same thing, they may not realize that's a red flag of an unhealthy relationship or that you know, it may impact their sense of autonomy and self-control. So I think it's just really important that we don't minimize that just because a parent is tracking a child, that that's any non-consensually secretly, um, that that's any different than anyone else secretly tracking somebody. Um, 
I know there might be parents on the call who may use these kinds of apps to keep tabs on their kids. And I think generally, as long as you and your kids are in an agreement about what that looks like, it's okay. Um, but I would just, you know, be careful not to conflate tracking for love with safety. Um, I don't know if Sky wants to add anything. Okay. Um, and have folks seen that situation come up at their agency? Or if you disagree with me, that's okay. We can talk about it. I will just note here that it seems like a new technology and it is. And five years ago, if someone was being tracked with a device, you had a private investigator or you had an actual device placed on a car that you could easily find because they were the car devices are a little bit bigger. But air tags and tiles are so small that I think it's going to come up more. So being on the front end of this, I think is going to be incredibly important. Yeah, I see Lola says that you thought about getting one for your son's wallet because he always misplaces it. I didn't purchase it because of safety concerns. Um, and Janelle said, I see it in DB cases more than SA. Yeah, and I think, you know, we'll talk at the end about the intersections between sexual violence and stalking, but um, very similarly, it, you know, there's obviously a lot of intersection between sexual violence and domestic violence as well. So they're all interconnected. Um, all right, next slide. Um, I actually forgot to mention on that slide, um, the impacts on survivors. So obviously um, they're really similar to that of impacts from other forms of violence. So loss of autonomy, hypervigilance, loss sense of safety, um, isolation, and in that same New York Times article on air tags, um, one person stated after realizing that she was being tracked, that she was terrified and frustrated that there was nothing I could do about it, um, noting that she hadn't returned to her gym since. Um, for a good week there, she just stayed home because um, the device was placed on her person while she was at the gym and she didn't know who put it there. Um, so that's, you know, when we think about it in terms of sexual assault, and it's not necessarily an intimate partner, it can often be someone that maybe has been noticing you at your gym that you go to every week. Um, and then they slip one into your gym bag. And those are the kinds of things that you wouldn't necessarily expect to look for. Um, but it's important to kind of be aware of. So, okay, next slide. Sorry, Alexandra. Um, so here we're just going to do a quick dive into air tags and tiles specifically and talk a little bit more about how they work, how to help someone know if they're being non-consensually tracked, and how to safety plan. Um, so air tags are paired with every device that has a Find My app. And this basically means that any Apple device, iPhones, watches, um, air tag is paired to the device using Bluetooth technology and again relies on the over 1 billion Apple devices that form a network with one another to use location tracking. So an example would be if you were to leave your wallet with an air tag in it at a bar, your air tag sends out a secure Bluetooth signal that can be detected by nearby devices in the Find My Network. And these devices send the location of your air tag to iCloud. And then you can go to the Find My app and see it on a map. And so while there's some privacy features built in, for example, only you can see where your AirTag is, your location data and history are never stored on the AirTag itself. Um, the AirTag <clears throat> is still connected by Bluetooth to other people's devices. So your location may not be sent to that person, but they are still, like that person's information is still being used to help you find the thing that you lost. And so, Similarly, like that's how other people can, can use it to track. Um, and so to address Janelle's question about tracker detect and kind of what these devices are gonna do to alert you that, you've been, that you're being, or that you have an AirTag traveling with you. Um, if you have an Apple device, you can use the Find My app 
tap items and select the item you're looking for. So in this case, it would be an air tag and locate the air tag. Um, that would be one way if you suspect that you're being tracked, you can go directly into the app, look for items. And if you see that you have an air tag that is unidentified, that you're not, it's not yours. Um, you can, like they said, you can get that pop-up that will have the serial number and you can figure out obviously that that's not yours. Um, and then by reporting, they may be able to find who the air tag was purchased by based on the serial number. Um, you can check bags, cars, clothing, because air tags are easily concealed, like Sky was saying. Um, they can fit in very small spaces. If you have an iPhone and you become untethered from the air tag, um, because whatever the air tag is tracking is too far. So if I'm trying to think of like an example. Um, so if someone is using an air tag to track you and that air tag is too far away from their device because it's their ad air tag and it's traveling with you for more than 24 hours, you will be alerted through a pop-up. And so that's kind of the other downfall of this is it only alerts you after 24 hours. And it used to be three days, but advocates um, pushed really hard for it to be less than that. So it's kind of a win, um, but still 24 hours is a long time. So um, you wouldn't be alerted. And when you are alerted outside of the pop-up, the air tag will beep, but it's a very low beep by all accounts from people who have experienced this. It's almost not super hearable. So if it was in your car and you had the music up, you probably wouldn't hear it beeping and it doesn't continuously beep, it will stop. Um, and if you don't have a um, iPhone, the beeping is the only thing that you would get. You would not get the pop-up. And so that's why they created this tracker detect. But as we mentioned, it's not gonna pop up unless you are actively like looking for it. And then the other thing about air tags is that if the person that's tracking you is someone you live with, um, you're not gonna get a notification because once the device is re-tethered to the air tag, the 24 hours resets. So every time that air tag goes back to the person who it belongs to, it um, re-tethers and so you, it starts over. So if you are being tracked by an intimate partner that you live with, there's a good chance you'll never be alerted to the fact that a tracking device is being used on you. Um, and so the way to disable the air tag, you can follow instructions on your phone to disable the location, or you can twist it back off and remove the battery. The battery life of, of an air tag is about one year, so it's a pretty long battery, but there are other devices like the tile who have batteries that are much longer. Um, and so again, like the video mentioned, when it comes to safety planning, make sure that they do document the serial number of the air tag so that they might be able to find the person who it belongs to. And just more information about the Tracker Detect app. The way it works is that if the app finds um, an air tag, it will flag it as an unknown air tag. If a, detective, a detected item tracker is known to be moving with a user for more than 10 minutes, users will be able to play a sound on the detected item tracker to help locate it. And from there, the user will be given instructions on how to learn more about it and how to disable it. Any questions about air tags? I realized that was like a lot and might have just sounded like a bunch of jumbled words. If you're typing, we'll come back to your question. Um, and so tile is very similar to air tags. Tile, I will say, is trickier. Um, at least Apple has tried to put in some privacy and safety features. Tile has not done that. Um, but Tile's network is also a lot smaller. Um, so they don't utilize the Find My Network. However, they are working 
on potentially securing a deal with Amazon, in which case the network would expand significantly, making it a little bit more dangerous in the way that we're talking about it, because obviously more people would be connected to that network, which means the stalker tracker would have more Bluetooth connections that would be able to help track the device. Um, and so the device is installed with the app with Tile, similar to AirTags and Find My form a tracking network to locate tiles anywhere in the world. A similar example to the AirTag one is if you're to leave your keys with a tile on the key ring in a lift and someone else gets in that lift with the Tile app, you would be alerted of the location of your keys, even if you didn't know that person. Um, Tile does currently have a partnership with Fitbit among some other companies. So if you have a Fitbit um, and it's possible that it has a tracking feature in your Fitbit that can also utilize the Tile network. Um, and so unlike AirTags, Tile does not have alerts that would let someone know if they become untethered from their Tile. This means that if someone were to be non-consensually tracking you by secretly inserting a Tile into your bag, the Tile nor your phone would get a notification about the device traveling with you. The best way to determine if you're being tracked using Tile is to conduct a thorough physical search. Um, you can disable the Tile Mate and the Tile Pro by sliding off the back panel and removing the battery. However, the Slim and the Sticker don't have batteries that you can change, and they have a battery that lasts two to three years. If you find that you're being tracked using a Tile, um, talk with a support person. So y'all would talk with your clients about um, the safety plan and what the best course of action is. <clears throat> Um, and then a final note just about safety planning. Like with other forms of stalking, once the stalker realizes that the victim is pulling away or after someone makes a report, the stalker's behavior may escalate. So for some people being tracked, simply disabling the advice, the device or getting rid of the device may be okay. Um, in other circumstances, such as if the victim is living with the person who's tracking them, it can potentially put them in more danger. So make sure when you're safety planning, you work through that and each and like each safety plan should be individualized um, for the safest option for that victim or survivor. Okay, next slide. So we're gonna, this is a very quick webinar. Um, so I hope everyone is gonna be able to take a break after this because um, this is our last slide. So um, the intersections of stalking and sexual violence, of course, um, are that perpetrators of sexual violence often groom victims through voyeurism, surveillance, and information gathering. So they may be using a air tag or some other type of device to get a sense of what the person's daily activities are like. So they know when may be a good time to assault them um, based on their location and things like that. 31% um, of women stalked by their intimate partner were also sexually assaulted by that partner. So in a situation where the intimate partner is the one doing the non-consensual tracking, there's a pretty good chance that, that there's sexual violence in that relationship as well. Like we discussed, research shows that 2% of people who are stalked were also sexually assaulted by the perpetrator. And some people who are sexually assaulted, they'll be contacted or stalked afterward by the harm doer. So it may be that someone experiences a sexual assault and through that incident, one of these devices is um, placed on the victim survivor um, so that the stalker can keep track of them and the assailant can keep track of them after the fact. So those are just some things to keep in mind when you're thinking about stalking and sexual violence because to Janelle's point, I think we do often think about these kinds of things in the context of DV but they are relevant to sexual assault as well. And that's it. Does anyone have any questions or have you heard anything in the news that you're like, that sounds scary, can we talk about it?
I can definitely send out the PowerPoint to folks. Um, and there is a resource page on there with information that was used to make this webinar, including the stalking and sexual violence toolkit that Sky and I put together. And that talks about non-consensual tracking devices, among other things, um, and is a good reference guide for anything that comes up as far as stalking goes. And then of course, if you have any legal questions, you can always reach out to Sky. Okay, I did see on the news that if you thought you were being stalked to go to a police station, not to go home. I think it depends on the situation probably. And if you have looked at the toolkit, you know, so like Sky was saying the cyber stalking laws and our other stalking laws are different. So I think I would defer to Sky to talk about like when would be an appropriate time to go to the police with cyber stalking versus our other stalking laws there are more, it's harder to like basically build a stalking case, I guess. So I don't know what Sky would say. Yeah, so our stalking laws actually say it must be two or more occasions. So that specifically says two or more, but our cyber stalking laws do not have that sort of incident level threshold that you have to reach. Just one time is enough. So um, as long as someone knowingly places that tag or whatever it may be on you, that would be sufficient for a case. Um, however, it is not as severe of a penalty as our stalking law, depending on where you fall on um, needing to or wanting someone to be penalized for that sort of behavior. Um, that's a different story for a different day but i do know that if if you do feel in danger at the moment um melissa's right you should go to a police station or somewhere where you feel safe and you know that there will be other people there that you know as far as safety planning goes someone that can help you in that situation yeah yeah so as far as you know if let's say someone feels like they're being stalked and they find that they're being tracked with an air tag. You can definitely report that to the police and then they could potentially, you know, within those cyber stalking laws, do something about that. But then if it's part of a larger stalking case, that could be one report in a pattern of incidences. So I would definitely report that if that's the route the survivor wants to go. And then, um, continue to keep track of all the other stalking incidences as well. Does that make sense, Melissa? And then I see that um, the other Melissa said, does NC CASA have a safety plan template? Um, I do have a document that I can share that has, it's basically a documentation guide for people who are being stalked. Um, so I can share that. I don't think I have it right here. So I'll put it in the email that I send with the PowerPoint. Um, but it's a template that you can give to clients to use to to um, document all of the incidences of stalking. And then the laws are also included in this PowerPoint for cyber stalking, but in the toolkit, there are also um, civil and legal options, um, civil and criminal options as far as stalking goes and stalking statutes as well that you can reference. Any other questions or scenarios? Okay, well, that was short and sweet. And I hope everyone has a great afternoon. I'll send out the PowerPoint. I'll send that document. And um, feel free to reach out to us if you want to talk about this any further. Bye.